What's up guys, Mike here. Today I got another stock for you guys that right now it is actually one of the fewest stocks that is undervalued during this crazy green market that everything is pretty much just flying up, especially with all these EV stocks that keep going up and up. So I found you guys a really good undervalued stock and that stock is none other than Good RX ticker symbol GDRX. Now as a pharmacist, I personally use GoodRx, their coupon cards, plenty of times in my pharmacies that I've worked at, in the pharmacies that I've used to work at, and in the current pharmacy that I am right now. So as a pharmacist, I know the GoodRx company and their coupon codes very well. So when you see me talking about this company, it's coming from someone who actually uses this company. They, I use their products and their services and what they offer, and I know exactly how Good RX makes their money and how the pharmacy makes their money using Good RX coupons. So make sure to pay full attention to this video because this video is going to go very detailed into the company itself. Also, some risks that you might be at because this company is just a IPO that went IPO in September. So you need to know some risks when it comes to buying shares for an IPO. So I want you guys to make sure you stick to the end to get all the information you need about taking the risk, about buying the stock or not. And everything is definitely gonna come to you and you make your decision. We're also gonna go over some charts, technical analysis, and also options that you guys can choose from in order to avoid buying shares and take less risk. If that is an option that you would like to take, if that's a path for you, I'm gonna go over all of that. So with that said, make sure to always smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's begin, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, guys, let's check out what's going on with GoodRx, ticker symbol GDRx. Like I said, this company just went IPO in September, early September, so this stock can be a little bit risky playing it and buying shares. So right now, GoodRx around, uh, excuse me, November 17th, went down really big time, and that's because Amazon announced that they will be uh, providing pharmacy online where people can put their prescriptions and pick up their prescriptions from Amazon and they're going online for the pharmacy industry. Now Amazon already owned a piece of the online industry and they were already providing this kind of service but now what they do, what they're actually doing is officially changing the whole system, the name of that company that they bought a while ago and just making it Amazon with the name of its own company and they're just performing a little bit more services than they did before. Now I'm going to go over that a little bit later because I want to show you a free uh, I want to show you some articles about that and what the CEO is actually saying that could affect G uh, good RX or not. Anyways, let's get to the chart. As you can see after an Amazon announced it it caused a huge spike down about a $10 10 to $15 drop in about a matter of a day and then a couple more drops the next day. But as you can see from here, GoodRx is pretty much extremely undervalued right now compared to all the other stocks right now that pretty much this market has been completely on a roll, right? Every day has been pretty much green for me. I don't know if it's the same for you guys. SPY, I can't say anything good about that because the S&P 500 has been going down pretty severely in the last few days. It's trying to hold it, but uh, a lot of stocks, a lot of tech stocks were just overvalued and a lot of them have started to move down. But the good thing is it's giving us a chance to buy on the dips. So that's good. And we need this S&P 500 to go down a little bit. You know, we need those discounts. We need those clearances to come and those sales to happen. So where do I see GoodRx going within the next few days or weeks or maybe in a, in a month? I think GoodRx has a huge potential to climb right back up to around 45 to 48 dollar range usually at about 46 i think 46 between 46 to 48 is a good uh, target zone and how do i assume this usually i go by previous uh, lows and previous highs right this can co this co company could go anywhere from a between 46 dollar range all the way up to $55 again, all right? These are about previous lows and previous highs. But the thing is, with IPOs, you have unlimited potential of loss, right? It's just not always going to be going up and up, right? As you saw from Palantir, the second that company went IPO, it dropped huge, 
But a lot of IPOs, what they have is huge potential to also bounce right back up and just go unlimitedly up and up, right? So there's a huge potential of you making huge return on this and also losing more as well. Now, if we go over the charts, as we can see, MACD, TSI all pointing down, but the, the histogram is turning a little bit, is going down, and if... If we have a few more updates, I can tell you this histogram will definitely flip upwards and be on a uptrend like this was before. Right now it's on a downtrend, but we want to catch the histogram and the bottom of this company. And right now this seems like about a bottom. If you guys want to take a quick swing at it, I would say go be, go about to the $42, maybe even $44, right? If you just don't trust the swings that's going on right now because it's an IPO, you can go to up to $42 right now. It traded around 38 and the market closed about 38.95 last time I checked. So you can easily assume this could go easily to 42 to $44. Where do I say you should start targeting buying it? If you can get it about $38 or less, and that could be a good deal, right? Anything between 38 or less could be a good deal if you're just going for the small swing from 40 to $42. You can do that. Even 44 would be a nice swing back to a 50% recovery for this stock. Usually stocks that crash this hard have about a 50% uh, potential of recovering. That's why I think $46 could be a nice sell zone once you get there. Now, let's go over some options as well as some news articles that came out on the day where it caused a crash and i'm going to tell you the potentials of what this company has because i'm a pharmacist i use this company a lot for my patients and i know a few things about how this company works and how they make their money so with that said let's move on guys so what happened was on november 19 a few days ago when amazon announced its venture business into the pharmacy business pharmacy service online it caused a good rx to drop jp morgan says good rx could be as good as dead but what happened was the ceo says this is not likely, all right? They, what they're saying is Amazon is going to be providing service and discount cards, which GoodRx may, makes most of its money doing uh, discount cards. So this could have a huge impact on GoodRx's business, and what they're doing could, could be phenomenally substantial to GoodRx's company. But as we read, read and continue to go on, the, I'm going to show you guys an article where the CEO says, no, this isn't going to be really affecting uh, GoodRx's business. They said it could take about a 14 to 15 percent rate of the GoodRx's uh, um, savings and money that they're making, but that shouldn't be too much of a wor worry because that's not how GoodRx fully makes all of its money. I think GoodRx still has a huge potential. And what they said is GoodRx still worth about $52, right? They're not saying GoodRx is a dead company. They're still saying they're still worth about a $52 buy, which is right now it's much undervalued if you really look at it. If you really look at the co company like I showed you, if the target is $52, it is undervalued, all right? That means GoodRx still has a potential. Now let's go over another article I want to show you guys. I found another article that said that GoodRx CEO is saying that it's not likely to have a huge impact on them. The Amazon effect isn't really going to impact their business. They're saying online business isn't too uh, easy to do. It's a hard road ahead for Amazon to have something like that because GoodRx has a lot of... Uh, offers with CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid. And these are the top companies that use GoodRx company. And Amazon is going to have a huge hard road ahead of itself in order for them to steal the mail order uh, pharmacy business, right? It's going to be a very tough road. I'm sure that Amazon is a huge corporation. They got the money to invest. They got the money to bring in the customers. They probably can do it, but GoodRx isn't going to be affected as much. Why? Because GoodRx offers discounts not only on medication, but also things like vaccines and other clinical services, which also brings in more income right so i told you guys i'm a pharmacist i use good rx when a patient i don't work at cvs anymore i actually used to work at cvs and i had lots of patients bringing these discount cards to cvs and i would use them and give them the coupon and give them the discounts what they did now at my pharmacy what we do is we try to compete 
with what GoodRx is offering to other pharmacies, right? Like, like let's say GoodRx would do drug X for 20 bucks at CVS. Now my pharmacy has to compete with that pharmacy, right? And I would have to say, listen, patient, CVS is giving probably the best deal, but what I can do is give it to you for $18 instead. You're already here. I'll give it to you for 18. You save two bucks plus you spend, you save your time from making another trip to CVS or somewhere else. And if you just get it from me, you you save time and money at the same time. So I'm telling you guys, GoodRx has still plenty of potential, plenty of room to continuously make money. COVID vaccines are coming in. GoodRx is probably going to offer discounts on these very soon. They always offer annual flu shot discounts. And lots of these companies will continue to use them, right? PBMs still have a huge role in Amazon's play, right? It's going to be difficult for them to do online services. Why? Because they can't do 90-day fill prescriptions. Amazon is limited to doing that when it comes to online services, right? Because they want people to go and talk to their pharmacist, right? It's important for you to go and talk to your pharmacist and understand your medication, right? If someone's getting a brand new medication, it's going to be very difficult for them to understand why they're taking it, what this medication's for, the side effects, and what what benefits they can get from it. And they can go to a pharmacy, a physical pharmacy, get all of that information from the pharmacist and be well-educated about their health and their wealth and their uh, well-being while using that specific medication instead of just going to put, putting their prescription online and just getting it and maybe they'll ask someone the pharmacist to co to contact the pharmacist on Amazon's end maybe they won't I don't see a lot of patients contacting it because it's a hassle for them to have to wait online wait on hold until someone finally picks up the phone call and says here let me help you right it's going to be very difficult anyways let's move on to options and i'm going to show you guys what options you can buy if you want to do call options and if you guys want to buy shares i want to show you guys how you can protect yourself if this stock starts going down you have a lot of potential of going and you're at huge risk buying shares and you should be aware of what types of protection you should be using in order to prevent massive loss. All right, guys. So if you guys just want to do call options on GoodRx, if you just want to do option play, the best two options I think you should get is the January. Make sure you're doing buy call January option. And I think the either the $50 call option or the $45 call option is the way to go. These could give you the best return while also minimizing risk of how much you're going to be willing to lose in an option call, right? Options are always risky. You have unlimited potential of the stock going down and you're losing and your option call expiring. So you want to take minimum risk, but also you want to maximize your returns at the same time. So like I said, if you want to do it, go with the 50. Implied volatility is relatively the same about this. Delta is relatively the same. This one gives you about a about a 0.151 one, sorry about a one nine more return so this one could be a little bit better but you're also putting yourself at a hundred and ten twenty dollars more risk if you do the closer in the money option right right now the stock traded at the end of the day for 38.95 on friday by 5 p.m closing time so you still have potential. This stock is going to continuously go up. I see a huge potential for this company. Now let's move on to how you can protect yourself if you have shares, right? If you have shares, you need to protect yourself. What would I recommend? Sell. Sell a call, that is, exactly, right? What you can do is sell a call and limit your potential losses and maximize those gains at the same time. What kind of sell orders can you do? Pretty much how much are you willing to take profit, right? Do you just want the $500 profit? Let's say you bought this stock for around $38, $39. Do you want to just profit off this $500 call and wait until January 15 expires and then sell it to the pe person for about 40 bucks? Or would you rather do the 45 take $100 and 75 about $170 less and limit that uh, loss? And at the same time, sell it for a little bit more if that occurs but let's say this stock can go down and you fear that this stock might actually go down in value what you can do to protect yourself again is to sell a put selling a put option can protect you all right 
This is how you're going to sell a put. What is a selling a put is? That means you agree to buy this share if it goes on $35 or below. So if it's at 30 bucks and you bought this put option, you sold this put, put option, you will be forced to pay $35 even though the stock is going for 30. But if you believe this call this con this uh, stock will go up to the 45 to 50 dollar range then the selling this put is pretty much you're guaranteeing yourself free money of 345 dollars just to sell this put you will have to put 3500 dollars as a down payment right when you sell a put you have to you are forced to put a down payment but you are also receiving $345 down. You put $3,500 down because your each contract is 100 shares, so you put $3,500 down, but you receive $345 back because you sold uh, the put. But if you think the, the stock will go down below, like the analyst, one analyst said, this stock could go about $29, then $30 might be the option you want to play. You'll only secure a $165 put. You only have to put down $3,000, but you take home $165. You limit your losses and your risk because uh, with IPOs can be very scary. The potential loss can be unlimited. But also, because it's an IPO, the potential gain can also be unlimited at the same time. This company can spike up at any given moment, right? When it first went IPO around September 23, what did it do? It spiked up, right? This can happen. This can have a nice 50% retracement from its highs and go to about 45 to 46 dollar range maybe even 48 dollar recovery right this can happen with ipos the thing is they have unlimited either losses or potential of unlimited gains it could even go back to its all-time highs about a 57 60 dollars right i got 100 shares on friday i thought i wanted to go ahead and get it get in my average cost is 38.35 and I might be planning on buying more shares, but I'm also putting myself at risk if I do that. So I'm definitely considering buying, selling calls, excuse me. I'm gonna be selling calls on my options, right? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna sell a call. I'm gonna probably go to the either the 40 or the $45 option call and i think that's enough for me 335 dollars plus that extra 200 i'm going to make from a 38 35 trade is good enough for me i might just do the 185 as well and take the extra five six hundred dollar boost at the same time and thanks again for watching my video as always make sure to smash that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so youtube could alert you when my next video comes out also feel free to add me on instagram i pretty much post there daily any trades i make i also post there so if you want to be part of that make sure to add me on instagram follow my trades there as well also if you want two free stocks from the stock market webull gives right now four free stocks one for just signing up to use their platform and three free more stocks when you make a deposit of a hundred dollars or more webull will give you a total of four free stocks minimum of eight dollars up to one thousand six hundred dollars for each of those stocks so make sure to check my link in the description below for webull and four free stocks if you want another free stock first trade gives a free stock they actually give really really good decent stocks so definitely check that platform if you want to just get those free stocks and if you want another free stock check out robin hood all of these in the link description below if you want free stocks from webull robin hood and first trade check my links in below i would always appreciate if you do use my links thanks again for watching my video and until next time make money with mike